turning our attention to wafers, which is the next stage in, in downstream production. And we're using wafer supply and ingot supply almost interchangeably here. Uh, we are seeing a sizable amount of new wafer capacity coming online, not only from the traditional wafer heavyweights like Longi and Zhong Huan, uh, but also from a number of new entrants like Gaojing Solar and Shuangliang Energy, which promise to bring nearly 100 gigawatts of new wafer production capacity online over the next several years. Almost all of this new wafer production is targeted at uh, 210 millimeter wafer size or uh, wafer production. And even suppliers like Jinko and Longi, which have adhered to the 182 millimeter uh, wafer size, um, they're also expanding their own wafer capacities. And there should be a sizable portion of these new wafers in either format on the market in coming years. It is still worth noting that a majority, almost all wafer manufacturing will take place in China. Um, there's really not a lot of demand for wafer production and centralized supply chains right now outside of China, even if many other regions uh, would wish they could rehome certain aspects of the solar supply chain. Almost all non-China wafer production um, that, that is located in uh, Asia or Southeast Asia is also owned largely by Chinese players operating facilities overseas. And we certainly see that there is no change in this scenario. Wafer manufacturing is uh, very capital intensive and only the big suppliers who either have traditional wafer manufacturing like Longi, Jinko and Zhonghuan can expand um, or some of the new players which have access to um, more financing, uh, more stable financing opportunities in the domestic market can expand. Um, so without any sort of major policy revisions or incentives in other parts of the world, Wafer manufacturing is all likely to be concentrated in China, very close to polysilicon production. And this also weighs on additional polysilicon production um, supplier hopefuls. It's very hard to bring polysilicon online overseas when all that polysilicon will eventually have to make its way back to China anyway in order to be manufactured into wafers. And so this puts foreign produced polysilicon at a decisive disadvantage in relation to domestic Chinese produced polysilicon uh, when it comes to the polysilicon that wafer makers are looking to buy. And finally, Wafer makers are continuing to sign very lengthy long term supply contracts with polysilicon producers in order to ensure that they have stable supplies of polysilicon in the future. But despite having these prearranged long term supply agreements, wafer makers are still at the mercy of spot pricing swings, although they may be have a little bit more insight and maybe a small cost savings in purchasing their polysilicon. Almost all these long-term contracts necessitate that polysilicon pricing is negotiated on a monthly or a, another periodic basis point, uh, which means that wafer producers do have to respond to changes in polysilicon pricing in the market. Uh, in the future, this could mean that wafer players are in a better position to uh, get to lower, more preferential uh, polysilicon pricing. But until all the additional polysilicon facilities start to come online, um, this is likely not to be the case.